one. Can you hear me? I guess you can. I'm so glad to see so many people. I'm going to talk today about event-driven systems with Kafka streams, which means that I'm going to talk about Kafka streams ma mainly. Uh, so let's kick it off. Who am I? There was a very mouthful title at the beginning, but I'm, I'm an engineer. I live in Krakow. I'm fully remote. Uh, I used to live in London, but Krakow is better to raise a family and small kids. I'm 10 plus. It's like 10x. Not really, but I just wanted to say that I've been in the business for more than 10 years, mainly coding in Ruby for about six years. And the last three or so, I've been switching and doing Golang a little bit. And about, I would say three years ago, I moved to data team and started using Scala more. So I'm, I would say I'm pretty newbie to Scala, but I love it. I like falafels and burritos. And Burritos are great in London, and in Krakow, we don't have any joints, so I'd really like to come to London for burritos. Agenda for tonight. Introduction, introduction to Kafka streams. If I, I, I hope everyone heard of it, but if not, I will just have a quick introduction. Then I will talk about more complex application, uh, leads management, and I will talk about Kafka streams in particular, about joins, key value stores, and scheduler. A small disclaimer, I will assume that you know about Kafka. I will not talk about consumer groups, about topics, partitions, how to create producers, consumers. I will assume you would know it. And there's going to be a lot of code. Kafka streams. So you might wonder why I'm here talking about Kafka Streams, which is a Java library. And the only thing I want to say, we use Scala. I don't know Java. I never use Java. I, I'm using Scala. I like it. It's, all, it's, it's better Ruby, basically, for me. Uh, and <laughs> don't say anyone. And what Kafka Streams provides, a really nice wrapper for Scala. So it's already in. in in main repository, and there's you just include it in your SBT. You can also include the second library, which I really highly recommend, Kafka Streams Test Utils, that, pro, that you can use to write your tests. Let's start by writing a simple application with Kafka Streams. First of all, you need to import Cerdis. Cerdis is a concept where you need to define your a way how Kafka Streams reads from topics. Kafka topics, which your data is in array bytes, and how you write back to topics. So you need to provide a serializer when you write back. Once you have it, you pass it as an implicit you, an entry point is Streams Builder, which provides a, a simple DSL to use and connect to Kafka. So for instance, to connect and read data from some topic, you just call builder stream, you know it's parameterized by strings, so key and values are just strings. Then when you have that source, and it will come with some text line, you can flop map values on it. You don't care about keys usually. It depends, of course. But you just split by word. You can filter it and just takes the characters longer than five, uh, words longer than five characters, and write back to Kafka. Once you have it, what you just done, we described a topology. We didn't run any code so far. I mean, when you started like this, nothing will run. You just describe a topology, and we'll see it later. To run your application, you need to provide a topology to Kafka Streams, create an instance of Kafka Streams, uh, and provide some options how to connect to Kafka. You start it, and it runs. Magic happens. What you need also to do, you need to add some hooks uh, to close the streams, to commit the offset, and so on. So what we've seen here, we described a very simple topology. And when you de define a application Kafka stream, you create that topology. It's just a graph of some computation. You, the nodes, we'll call them stream process. You have like all of the nodes called stream process source, but you have source processor. You need to have one to connect uh, to, to some topic. And you also, but not always, should have a sync processor. So looking on my simple application that I wrote before, we have 
input topic on the top, output topic in the bottom, and four processors. Source, which just connects uh, our application with Kafka topic, sync, and in between we have a flap map values that was doing just splitting and filtering later. If we run my application, and I just hello my awesome Scala friends, I will write it to some topic. When I read another one, it will give me awesome friends. That was a very simple example, but I would say there are many use cases where you want to do it. You just want to read from a topic, you want to transform some values, write to another one, so then you can use Kafka Connect or whatever tool to write to S3 to some another data source. So you can easily write an application uh, in a manner of few minutes, maybe not minutes, but hours. And so summary, a simple DSL. And this is a big thing for us because there is a low barrier to entry to, to understand what's going on here. Well, I, I think everyone could understand. Uh, just And write something useful would be pretty easy. You describe topologies. It's similar as in Spark, if you have anyone use it. And another key thing is you run whenever, wherever you want it. Back in the days, and we still use Spark, and one thing I, I don't like about it that I, that Whatever, if you use EMR or whatever, you need to have the cluster to run on it. And if you don't have a big team to support the cluster, it's on you. Uh, and I don't like to support clusters and maintain them. Okay, let's move on to a bit uh, more complex use case, uh, more event driven, because before what I showed just string processing, we process some messages from Kafka, we transform them. Problem. We, con we, we want, let's say simply business, want contact customers that haven't purchased a policy. A quick example, it's September almost, so Santas are getting ready for their work, and one thing they need, they need insurance, they run very risky businesses, they can fall from the roof on someone, so they need public liability at least, maybe even more. So what they do, they go to Simply Business, then some questionnaires to answer some questions, how many presents they give, how many reindeers they have. Once they answer those questions, they will go to get to the quotes comparison page, see all those different policies, how, how they cost, and they will select one uh, and they will be happy they will have an insurance. But not really. What happens? Once they got the quotes comparison page, they will see the prices and they will get busy and they will not buy our insurance. They will just go and do their stuff. What we want to do in this case, we want to call them after some time uh, or once they disengage. We want to contact our Santas. So business requirements for the application. Call customers who haven't purchased a, po a, policy, a policy. Don't call customer many times. We need some duplication because it can go through the flow many, many times. And don't contact them immediately because it would be a bit spooky and that if we're just contacting them, oh, they are still on the forum and we call them. One thing I didn't say, we have loads of events that are going through the, once someone goes through the questionnaire, uh, we fire events like quotes created event. That's gonna be an event that will drive our application. And we also have entities. So have you heard about CDC, like change the data capture? So we have a table in our transactional systems. There is contact details. And we push those stream of changes of the, of the table to Kafka to put it somewhere. So we have a stream of contact details also in Kafka, but in different topic. So now app requirements, just quickly. And which events store the state because we need to do duplicate. Delayed send, sending to dialer service and as few, this is also important, as few external dependencies as possible. Because why do you need to use many if you can use one? Recap, simply business side, Kafka in the middle, and our dialer service here. You need something that will connect the dots. Let's start with the enrichment. As I mentioned, we have two Kafka topics. One has 
events and other um, entities, and we need to join them. So we can create a, a some new object and reach that we can later use. Some code. I hope you're happy. Uh, first of all, we will do the same thing as before. We need service. This time, this is a bit more. It's not just strings and ins like that are, are provided uh, usually in a in Scala, in Scala library. We need to define our custom ones. So we define contact details survey, quotes created, and contact requests. We read from quotes created. We create that before. We create a stream, and then we create a global table of contact details entity. This is a bit of simplification because uh, what we do here, we read from Kafka and we tell Kafka streams to materialize it as a table that you can use later for lookup. And it will be constantly updated and uh, Kafka streams will make sure that before you start your application, you will have that table ready for a lookup. To join it, simple, three lines of code. First of it, you tell it to join, then Code created user ID, it's going to be a key that you will use to look up the, the data in that table, in the global table. And then you pass a function, contact request, that will take quotes created and contact details and put it in, in a new structure. That's it. And then you can send it to a topic. Done. Let's move on. Store state and the duplicate. The duplication, uh, I guess it's well known. So we have, we can have many quotes created events for the same user, and we want only one, really. We don't want to, to keep getting those events. Once we get one, we, we are fine. Kafka Streams provides local state stores. Uh, we could use external dependencies, so provide some database, whatever, but why, if you can use something that is already in, in the library? So what it is? A key value stores, a key value store that when you use persistent one, an engine is a RocksDB database. And Kafka Streams guarantees its fault tolerance and atomic re automatic recovery. So once you define a store, you put something into it, Kafka Stream will create un underneath a topic in the cluster and it will be flashing the changes uh, that you made to that store. And once you start a Kafka streams before starting processing, it will read before uh, it's, it starts reading from Kafka. A few more. So to our previous example, we are adding a few more lines. I will zoom in. So what we do, we define our store. So we tell stores, give me a persistent key value store. We provide a name. Then we define, we need to define service because it's the same. We, the data will be written back to Kafka. So we need to say that, we, okay, it's a, some case class. We want a value service for that case class. And then we add it to the, to the streams builder. So Kafka streams knows about this story. The next bit, and this is where we cannot really use a simple DSL, and we, are, we need to define and use uh, some Java, inter some interfaces that we need to inherit. So what we do, we transform values. We say, save and the duplicate, and that save and the duplicate I will show in a second. And we need to tell Kafka Streams that we will use that story. Because when it's creating a topology, it has to know which nodes will have an access to, to a state store. Save and the duplicate ret returns, might return something or not, because it the duplicates. So it, it returns an option of contact request, we will see. So we need to flat map, flat map it before we will pass it to the next one. We need to use state stores, as I said. We need to use a bit, a bit more, that's simple DSL. What we do, we extend value transformer that gets a contact request and can return a contact request, but it doesn't have to. And you need to implement uh, three methods from the interface, init, transform, and close. Init is where you define, like you, need to, you want to initialize uh, some of the dependencies and some services. Uh, transform when you get a record by record and close when you want to close some of the services. So in the init, we just say we want to use the state store so we will have an access to it. 
Then what we do, we check in the store whether we already have anything in the store for that user ID. If we have, we map it, we say it's deduplicated, we just add out. Or if not, we pass that contact request. Then we kind of absurd it or put it if it's new. And then we say, if it's fresh contact request, we never seen it, we'll pass it down to the next processor. If not, we just return none. We're done. Success. <laughs> uh, so we managed to stay start with, with ended duplicating also in many of few, few lines of code. Next, we need to delay sending to dialer service. As I said before, we don't want to be scary and call at once when someone gets on the page and we will want to give them a chance to fill up and do it on their own to buy a policy. So we need to put some some schedule add or something that it will call it later. But what we usually want is also to call them really quick. Like when they disengage, there's for amount of some amount of time there's no actions uh, we would like to call them because they are still have a context of buying a policy and so on. So schedule. So Kafka streams provide this feature that I will show in a second. What it does is perform some periodic operations on your stream and, and it's available from the processor context, which I showed before. Quickly, new, a few lines of code. We provide a, this time transform, delay, and schedule, and also flat map because it can or cannot, usually it won't return at this point of time, but later it, can re it will return some objects and messages. This is the whole implementation. It's a bit longer, but it's the same. I mean, you need to implement interface uh, of, of transformer. This, this time it gets also a key, not only the value. So the parameter is, uh, is a bit longer. So string on the request, it can return key value. Let's move on <coughs> first to transform. So the, once it gets a message from the duplication, what we do, we absurd and set, we use a function set schedule up and we absurd some value and return none because we don't want to pass it late, pass it at the moment. That function is just set so, some, some new state like schedule add plus 50 seconds, but really it should be plus an hour, whatever. Doesn't matter in this case. And in init, what we, we do is the same as before. We want an access to contact request store. And co processor context has this nice functionality that you can schedule thing. You pass how often so something has to run, uh, let's say every 10 seconds, 5 seconds, whatever. Then what type? Usually there are two, wall clock time and stream time. I never use the stream time, I use this one. And it, every 10 seconds it will be, let's say, run this function that I'm passing here. What it does? It will iterate over every element in the store. I don't recommend it to do it in production code. It's just for sim simplification for this example. What it iterates, it checks whether it's ready to send, passing a, a now. And if it's ready, we will set some flag that it was forwarded. And then we use context forward method to pass it down to the next processor node. So this, this way, initially, when it goes transformed, nothing will be passed, but every 10 seconds we will be checking whether something is ready to be sent. So like coming back to our full flow of the application and the, and the requirements we had, we joined, we save and duplicate it, we delay and schedule, and at the end we send to some topic that our dialer service will, will listen to. We could still simplify it, like flatten up values we could en enrich case streams and add some flat map transform values, but I haven't done it, uh, just to keep it a bit simpler. And what you can do next, you can add more st new, new streams. Like you can listen to a new stream, like policy purchased, where you remove your something from the state, 
because someone purchased, so why you will keep state for that? Like you, you can have a service that sends a user disengaged event, like someone disengaged with the event, with the, the flow of the site, so we would like to call them now, so we would change the schedule out at that time. That's it. We delay the sending, and we haven't used many external dependencies, done and done. And just a quick sum up of what did we learn. Uh, how to use Kafka Streams, really, if you had never used it, uh, that's more or less how you can use it. Uh, how to build a streaming app. Uh, so what I showed at, at the beginning is just streaming, but you can also build an even driven system, which I showed later. All the examples I showed, uh, you can find here, uh, fully tested with that unit Kafka test library. And yeah, that's it. Any questions? <laughs>